Hey, 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 hold on, hold on. Gather around, everybody. Listen up. I got a story to tell. Tell, tell, tell. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Rico Lane, and thank you for checking in to the Blessed Money Podcast, where we help you build your relationship with Christ by sharing blessings and testimonies on Bible scriptures that is manifested in everyday people's lives like yourself. If you have ever found the Bible difficult to understand, struggle with your faith, or simply wonder why Christians believe the way that they do, then this podcast is definitely for you. I believe that if we can show you that the Bible is made real in our personal lives today, even though it was written so many years ago by so many different authors, then you just may change the way you view the Bible. It may even spark your curiosity on the Bible or Christ, and I know without a doubt, if you seek Christ, you will find him. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And oh yeah, don't forget, be a blessing and share your testimony. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. I thank you for an opportunity for me to be used by you, Lord. I thank you for an opportunity to be a vessel to share your word. I pray that as I discuss your word, that it it is all you and none of me. I also pray that the listeners' ears, their eyes, their hearts, and their minds are open so that they hear the truth, they know the truth, and they understand the truth. And anything that may not be the truth, I pray that you take it away from their memory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, what's going on, brothers and sisters in Christ? Thank you for checking in to today's episode. I'm so excited to kick it off because we have a powerhouse guest and we're in the book of Psalms 118, verse 6. Let's hop right into the word and get to today's blessedimony. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Man, that is a powerful scripture. It reminds us that as long as we got God on our side, we ain't got to worry about nobody. We don't have to be afraid of nothing because God has our back. What can anybody do to us? It reminds me of a time I was living in Virginia. I was in about fourth or fifth grade. And there was this one older kid who used to always mess with me, kind of pick on me, talk about me. And I'm not going to lie, I was afraid of him. But that all changed when my big cousin moved in with us. See, my big cousin had my back. My big cousin wouldn't let nobody bother me. He also taught me how to take up for myself. And so when he was around, I had more confidence. I wasn't afraid because I knew nobody would mess with me as long as I had my cousin. But imagine Jesus as the biggest and the best of all cousins, the baddest of all cousins. Can't nobody touch us as long as we got Jesus having our back. And it's the same way. When you know the Lord that you serve, when you know that he cares for you, when you know that he's there for you, then there's nothing man can do to you. There's nothing man can say to you. There's nothing that you can't accomplish because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so that's what today's scripture is on. And my guest today has a great blessedimony on that scripture and how it manifested in her life. She is a bad woman. Educated in Chicago for 14 years, one of the roughest cities in, or one of the roughest states in America. She's also an author like myself. She got a book called Underneath the Hat, and I love that title. It talks about how the hat is like uniforms that we wear when we're going through life and dealing through things. And I'm not going to go into too many details because I'm going to allow her to share her story. But just know it is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or anywhere you pick up books. Man, the lady's so busy, she's working on the second book where she talk about the journey, her journey through infertility. And so if you're dealing with something like that, feel free to stay tuned and check out that book. But here's the thing I love the most about my guest. She is a mentor just like me. She got a program. It's called Young Ladies at All Times, where she's giving back to the youth. She's helping young ladies in in America and in her city. And hopefully one day around the world, just know their worth, know their value, uh, not how to deal with the pressures of life. And I like that because as a Christian, I feel like it is our duty to mentor and give back. 
And so we have that in common. It is our duty that if we've been through something or if we accomplish something to give back to others so that they can do the same. It's all about loving people. That's what God means when he say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You love yourself enough to make accomplishments that show somebody else how to do it. And I love the fact that she's doing that as well. So I'm not going to drag this out. We're going to hop right into the blessed morning. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, my guest, Cherie Simmons. Simmons, Simmons. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited because I truly believe, too, that you go through tests in order for you to share what you've been through. It's not about you, but about the person that you can help. So I'm very excited for being a part of this podcast. So I'm just trying to make sure that I share my testimony with other people so that they don't have to go through some of the same things the way I went through. Um, I know we'll all have to go through our own journey and make our own mistakes at one point in time. But I believe that if I know that the fire is hot, I'm not going to watch you put your hand in it and not warn you first. So that's what I believe that I'm doing by sharing my story with Underneath the Hat and with my upcoming book on my journey through infertility. So um, how long did it take you to write your book? Oh, I started my book, it really started as therapy um, because it chronicles my relationship with my first husband and what we went through and the lessons that I learned through his infidelity. And so it was therapy for me. So I wrote it and then it sat for like two or three years. Oh, wow. And it wasn't until I met my second husband and he was like, you need to get this book out. Now, most men, given what I went through, would be tired of hearing about it. But he was my biggest cheerleader, telling me, you need to tell your story. He tells me all the time, you need to tell your testimony. So I'm like, well, how much more can I tell? So <laughs> I was just glad God sent me somebody to root me on, even when I don't feel like. He, he was the one and the reason why this book got out the way that it did and in the time that it did. But it's that for three years. Under my living room table before I even found a publisher or God sent me one that uh, helped me through the process of getting it published. Amen. So what, where can we get the book? Um, It's available on Amazon. It's available um at Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. It's called Underneath the Hat. Um, other thing too is you had a, a mentor program. I'm not sure if you know, but I'm in the military uh, and one of the programs that I was in a, a few years back when I was stationed in Arizona was this thing called Mad V, Military Against Domestic Violence. And we would go out mm -hmm. to like middle school kids and yeah. just explain to them what a good relationship is, what a bad relationship is, what are the signs of somebody who may be uh, being abused or assign somebody in a domestic violence situation. So that way we, they can learn early and then they will, and yes. hopefully they will be able to one, not put themselves in that situation or speak up if they know somebody is in that situation. And so when I read your uh, bio and it talked about your program, I just wanted to kind of just get more information on what you're doing. Um, well, my program is called young ladies at all times. We actually just celebrated our third year yesterday so um, I started this because I was an intermediate math teacher in Chicago uh, in 2016. And I noticed that a lot of the girls were mimicking what they were seeing on TV as far as conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, we need to do something about this because y'all act more rough than the boys. So I started this program. And it was part of my um, master's program where I had to do my thesis. And so I talked about the effect of reality TV on girls between the ages of 8 through 12. And so from that, I got the idea of showing them how to carry themselves versus what they see on TV. And it, it stems from the quote by Marion Wright Edelman that says, you can't be what you don't see. Mm. So, so often we get mad at people for how they act, but if they didn't have an example of what else they could do, then they only gonna do what they see. So I actually decided to come up with this program and I've been able to help over 40 girls just in three years. 
working with different uh, four different schools in Chicago, and um, now I've God has allowed for me to enlarge my territory. So this March, I've partnered with the church on the south side, which will be our satellite location, and we'll have Saturday sessions as well. So instead of me going into the schools, I'll be able to touch more girls in other neighborhoods because they'll be able to come to me. And I invite other women who grew up like them, who look like them, and are in the fields and careers that they want to go into. And so they get to see that it can happen. It can be done. It's not something that I can't reach because this woman is here telling me that she did it too. So every week we'll have guests come in, teach them etiquette classes, um, teach them about self-esteem. We do a vision board paint party, um, different activities. We go on field trips. And then women come in and tell them how they carry themselves as women in their personal and professional careers. And at the end of three months, we have a luncheon where we celebrate the girls and allow more people to see what it is that we've done as a way to help them carry themselves as young ladies at all times. Man, that is amazing. You know what? We actually need something like that for for men as well. So me personally, I grew up without, I grew up without a dad. And so I would look at TV, actors, rappers, people in my community of what it means to be a man. And, and so often it's the wrong way. It's, it's nothing that glorify right. God. It's nothing that will build me up. And so I, I, I found that once I gave my life to Christ that, you know, I started realizing what it truly means to be a man, how to truly treat a woman, how to truly interact in your, your various relationships, whether that's with your kids or with the people that you work with. You know, Book of Ephesians does a great job of explaining that. But a lot of people, they look to TV or they look to the uh, these Instagram yep. stars and all that kind of stuff on how they should live. And so that's just amazing that you're doing that. And I just pray that God just continue to use you as a vessel and bless that. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Like what you hear so far? This podcast is made possible by listeners just like you. You can support the show by purchasing a copy of the Blessed Money book or apparel on Amazon.com. The proceeds help us to continue to deliver the Blessed Money ministry. You can continue the conversation on BlessedMoney.com or on the Blessed Money app, available on both Apple and Google's Play Store. We would love to hear your thoughts on the show or your testimony on today's scripture. Thank you for your support. And now back to the show. Show, show, show. So, all right. So without further ado, we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and hop into your blessed morning. Uh, what is it? Psalms 118, verse 6. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and read that real quick and then just share your testimony okay. on it. So Psalms 118, oh. 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? It's powerful. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I love this. This scripture really helped me. And I actually closed out my book underneath the hat with it. So within the book, um, I go from the beginning of my story. So I start with my love foundation because I realized that I had married my father. Mm. And so after going through therapy and taking the rose colored glasses off and blinders off and actually dissecting what had happened to me, I realized that I had married my dad. A lot of the traits that we like, the positive traits, negative traits, things subconsciously that we don't realize that we're picking up on and carrying with us, we end up finding in our mates. And it wasn't until I went through therapy that I realized that a lot of the things that I wrote down for my dad, I found in my first husband. Wow. And so once I started healing that relationship with my father, I was able to ultimately heal my relationship with my first husband. We don't talk at all, but I felt differently about him because I started to understand why he did some of the things that he did that led to us being in the situation we were in, which ended in divorce. Mm. So it wasn't until I went through that that I realized that you have to have more empathy for other people. But before then, I was a people pleaser. It was, okay, well, what can I do for you? I don't want you to be mad at me, so I'm going to do this even though I may not agree with it. And being a first lady of a church, which was 
uh, what my first title was as wife. I not only was a wife, but I was the first lady. And so they have a different level that they put us in. And so I had to keep up this facade of, okay, everything's pretty, everything's nice. I wear these big hats. That's part of the title, underneath the hat. It represents the uniform that women were required to wear as first ladies. You're expected to wear big hats and nice suits and nice shoes and keep yourself looking a certain way. But I realized that a lot of us are living in this facade of everything is great when it's not. I was wearing these big hats, but I was crumbling underneath it and nobody knew. Wow. So I was trying to please everybody and keep up this facade in order to protect my ex-husband's image at the time as the pastor of this church and make sure that nobody knew that we were separated and we were divorced and we had gone through all these things because people were used to smiling. Everything was great. And it wasn't until God literally had to pick me up out this relationship and drop me for me to realize that he had been there the whole time. Mm. You know what? I not, say in my book. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, not to cut you off, but you just you brought up a valid point I want to share with you. So this past Sunday, my uh, I actually got to preach for the first time in my church. My pastor asked me to preach. And I had a whole oh, different, wow. yeah, I had a whole different sermon that I was going to talk about because I'm, with me being in the military, I have a lot of leadership experience. So I was going to talk about like being a servant leader, but then God just convicted me and just changed my complete sermon. And what I talked about was just what you went through, you know, being in the church, nobody knew what was going on. You were crumbling on the, in, uh, on the inside. And I talked about how it's just not good for man to be alone and how we got to love each other and care for one, for one another. And a lot of times uh -huh. we call each other's brothers and sisters in Christ, but we don't even really know the people we're in church with. I had the congregation. No, yeah, I had them look at each other. Right. And I was like, listen, do this person even really know you? Your neighbor, do your neighbor really know you? Do they know what motivates you? Do they know what makes you sad? Do they know? Do they even have your phone number? Do they even know where you live? Oh. And so, and the reality of it is, is that we're doing life alone. We're so isolated. So when we go through something and when we're struggling, we we don't tell anybody, and that's exactly where Satan wants us. And so, so I I didn't want to interrupt. I just wanted to just let share that with you. But I'll go ahead. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I I have I had gone through the same thing. Because again, my ex-husband had, had manipulated me into thinking that what happens in this house stays in this house. Mm. And so a lot of the stuff that was going on, I didn't feel I could share. And he had been manipulated and controlled me. I met him when I was 16. We were together for 16 years. So half of my life was brain, being brainwashed by this man, mm. even as a teenager. You learn, they say kids don't know, but we pick kids pick up on a lot of stuff. That's why as parents, you got to be careful who you allow your kids to be around. Because they're picking stuff up subconsciously that we don't even realize that they even paid attention to. And then they end up growing up at 17, 18 years old, manipulating people, controlling people. And so even though we were young when we met, he had learned things before he met me that helped him to be able to control my situation. My relationship with my family wasn't where it could have been. He, he played on that just like the devil does. He, he found my weaknesses and he played on it. So I couldn't even go to my family and tell them certain things because I was trying to keep up this image. And I couldn't go to the church because, hey, this is my job. This is what we do. We got to put on a happy face. Yeah. And so God knew that he had to do, I call it a TKO in my book. He had to totally knock me out because I was intertwined with this man. I say in my book that I knew who God was, but my idol, my God was my ex husband And a lot of married people, that's how it is. Mm-hmm. It wasn't what would Jesus do. It was like, okay, well, what is he going to say? Should I tell my hair? Well, he likes his nail color. Now I'm not going to get that outfit because he wouldn't like it. I knew who God was. I grew up in church from the time I was 10 years old. I was on every ministry you could think of, singing, dancing, uh, on the pastoral relations committee, on the music committee. So I knew what church was. I knew who God was. But I didn't have a relationship with him. Mm. I, I was in relationship with my ex husband But I had, I had a religious situation with God. 
it was follow these rules and this won't happen. Yeah. So I didn't know who he was until I went through this experience. I didn't know who I didn't know who he was until I went through this experience. So it wasn't until we separated and I started to talk to people in my circle who knew me or I thought knew me. And then I realized that they had gone through some of the same things I went through and had survived it. But it wasn't until I opened my mouth and gave my testimony that I realized that I'm not by myself. And so I know the devil gets mad every day I wake up because <laughs> this woman right here, she is just messing up the whole situation. And I always tell people, I say, even with all the stuff that's going on, I was telling my husband this morning, all the stuff that's going on with this Gail King and this Kobe Bryant, I'm like, black people, we need to wake up. <laughs> we really do. Because this is nothing but the devil trying to separate us and manipulate us. Because I always say a burglar does not rob an empty bank. We've been saying for years that people have been stealing from our culture. Who steals something they don't like or that they don't feel is valuable? So until we realize how valuable we are, they gonna keep doing it. And they're turning us against each other while they do it at the same time. And so that's what has been going, that I have been going through in my relationship with my first husband. And it wasn't until God removed me from there and let me know I've been here the whole time. Everything you were giving him credit for, I did that. And so my relate the one good thing that came out of this marriage, the first marriage, was that my relationship with I formed a relationship with God. And I compare it to religion versus relationship. I had I was in a religion with my first husband. It was do this, do that, follow these rules. This will happen if you do this. But with my new, my second husband, this. I now have a relationship. I know what a relationship is. And it mimics the relationship that I now have with God. That's awesome. So it's just the things that God is, is revealing. And me knowing now who he is and who I am and who I am, I don't fear what other people have to say. I don't care what other people have to say. People see me and say, well, you you don't look 37, but you are 37. And you don't sound like you're 37. I never understood why people go through things and don't learn from the people around you. Why would you want to make the same mistake if you saw somebody else make it? You wasting time. God is allowing you to be in the presence of people to watch what they do and listen to what they do. So if I see you making a mistake, I'm not about to turn around and do the same thing and think that it's going to be a different outcome for me. They say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And we got too much to do to be walking around here crazy. So once I realized who that God was on my side and realized that who I was able and capable of being by being in his presence and had been in a relationship with him, I no longer worried about what people could do or say to me, especially in the church. Because church people are ruthless. If you, that is the best you camp ever. <laughs> go to a church because they will say some things and do some, do some things and then you get to work and you're like oh y'all ain't nothing I heard worse than that yesterday at church and that's sad it really is sad that that yeah. you know I'll you know, I, I be a part of these uh, Christian groups on Facebook and those type of things and it's like man Christians we tear each other down more than, than atheists or more than people or non-believers yep. and it's just like it's it's yep. really is sad it's just which is what kind of started, which is what made me want to start Blessimony. So in addition to the to the podcast, I, I have an app for Blessimony. And the whole point of that app is to be kind of like a Facebook for Christians. And so you can get on there, share yeah. your testimonies and share your blessings and talk with other people. But it's also a way for people to say, hey, you know, uh, come to know Christ without feeling judged. Come to know him without people putting right. you down. And, and, and that's what we need in the church, to be honest. It is. So what was the turning um, point? For, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, so what was the so what was the turning point? So you were with your husband and and, and things weren't going well, y'all separated, and you realized that you were really um 
more so worshiping him than you were God. So what was what was uh-huh. that that turning point to where things changed for you and and you came to Christ and start not fearing man or fearing what people have to say? Um, the turning point for me, and and trust me, I tried to go back. I was like, well, we can work on this. This is really only the the, the, the biggest thing we've dealt with in all these years. We can work on this. And God was like, you are not listening to me. You are not listening to me. And so he kept knocking me down. When I thought we were on the right track, oops, here comes something else. And it wasn't until, you know how when you set up your cell phone information in order to prevent someone else from getting into your account, you have to give a password Mm -hmm. and they ask you what the past, they ask you for a question to help you remember the password. So the question for to get into his account was his best friend's last name. So I'm typing it in. I'm like, Oh, I know that it didn't work. So God said, try her name. Hmm. And it was his mistress's last name that opened up his account. After that, I was like, okay, I'm done. But other stuff had piled up. I found out about multiple women, women in the church. I was on the usher board. There were people in the pews. There were people in the choir stand. There were people who had been to my house. Wow. God kids, parents, uh, the mother, one of uh, some of our God kids was one of them. I was like, it's, it's, it's too much. And so that was the straw when I realized that he is in love with this woman. Like, it's, it's all these layers. And he's not fighting for me as much as I was fighting for him. And so we divorced two years after we separated. And so we've been divorced now for six years. And I will say that even from the time that we decided we were going to separate, all the way up through the separation and the divorce, God has been carrying me, like, when I was able to be strong enough to walk on my own, he was standing there next to me. When I needed to lean on him, he was there. When I couldn't take it and I was finding out all this stuff, finding out about people who I thought were friends calling me sis, but you were messing with my husband, he was carrying me. So he knew how strong I needed to be for certain things. He saved the worst of the worst. The, one, the part he knew would have killed me if I had found out first. He saved that to after we had divorced mm. because he knows his children. Yeah. He knows how much he can handle. He knew that if he had hit me with that first, I would have been no good. And I mean, I had some snap, crackle, pop moments with the people I thought were at one level. And I mean, I could honestly be talking to you from behind bars because there was some things that could have pushed me to that. But because of that, that size of a mustard seed faith I had in him, because I didn't really fully have a relationship with him like I have now. But that carried me to know, no, you can't do this. You can't do this. It's a greater purpose for you. Yeah, that's and actually so, that's actually what I wanted to ask. So a lot of people, they go through something like that, especially going through so much abuse from church members. They typically mm-hmm. blame blame God and they typically turn away from right. from the church. So so it was it your faith? What was it that made you say, hey, you know, this is not God. This is man. This is what man is doing. And and, and I'm not gonna turn away from God because of what a man did. I will admit there were times where I was like people would like, okay, should we need to pray? I don't want to pray. I need a minute. Just let me because my thing is I'm I'm a very stubborn person. I'm I'm a very loyal person. When I'm with you, I'm with you. And when I love you, I love hard. And so I take my thing, the same way that I love family and friends is the same way I love God. Like, I'm not about to play with you. And so I would do things and say, okay, Lord, I will repent later, but I really need to do this. (laughs) I really need to say this. Like, I'm gonna need you to cover your ears, close your eyes, just give me this moment. And I promise when I'm done, I'll repent and I'll be done. So I was building that relationship with him. Well, I'm not about to lie. I'm about to tell you, okay, I will never do this again because it's a chance I might. Okay. So just give me a minute. And when I'm done, I'll, I'll be 100% on the right path. But there were moments where I didn't want to hear about that. I don't want to pray. I don't want to go to church. Leave me alone. Because it really hurt giving the person who was doing it. He's a pastor. He gets up in church 
every Sunday and preaches to people about what they should and shouldn't do. And you're the biggest hypocrite in there. Mm. And so I had to, and I was going to church every Sunday. I moved out July 27, 2012, which was a Saturday. I was in church with my hat on July 28th. Like nothing happened. Like I didn't just move out of my hus- of my house with my husband and into my own condo. And nobody knew. People didn't know for months. My whole family didn't know for five months that I had moved out. Wow. So it was, there were moments. There are going to be moments. I mean, even God got upset. Jesus got upset. Yeah. He questioned God. They tell you all the time, don't question God. What you mean? The, Jesus said on the cross, why has thou forsaken me? That's a question. Yeah. Same thing with Job too. When it came to Job, he wasn't angry that Job was questioning him and, and, and asking him. He was more so angry that he made the assumptions. He he was angry that Job thought that he could understand God. So God was like, listen, you weren't here when I did this and I did that. You don't understand me. But uh-huh. he, but God do want us to humble ourselves, come to him, and ask those questions and, 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 and let him know that, hey, God, I don't understand. I'm going through this. And I need right. you right now. You're going to have to explain some things to me or, you know, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> yeah, I was watching a Facebook Live yesterday of uh, Pastor John Hanna here in Chicago. And he was saying, sometimes God will get you so low to where he, he sets it up for you to get so low so you got to come to him. So that you can recognize that it's his strength that got you through, not yours. And that's exactly what I had to do. I had to go through that. Because I was so dependent on my ex-husband that I didn't even realize God was in the equation. I thought it was all him. And then God was like, okay, I need you for something bigger. And I know you can't stay in this relationship with him and get to where I need you to get to. And so I'm going to have to take you up out of here. And it's going to hurt. Your feelings going to be hurt. Your pride is going to be hurt. You're going to feel some things you've never felt before. But in the end, it's going to be your testimony. And you're going to help somebody. So here we go. And he started off slow. But then the more, the higher he needed me to get, the worse it got. I I was telling my husband, Vince, I said, it's like pigeons and eagles. The higher you go up in elevation, you notice the, the less amount of birds that they carry in a group. So eagles don't fly with other eagles. They mm. fly by themselves. But pigeons gather on the ground fighting over scraps. So the higher we go in God, there will be times where we will be by ourselves. No one else is going to understand what we're doing. No one else can handle the air up there. Mm. And sometimes we can't even handle it. But because God is carrying us and he's there with us, then we're able to handle the things that we're able to do. Somebody had, I was out with my mother and sister about two weeks ago, and we were talking. I told them about this dream I had. And they were like, are you still in love with your ex husband? I said, because I had a dream about him. And then I had to think about that. I'm like, and I told my therapist the next day, I said, no, I'm not. Because I started to question myself, like, you do have these dreams. But God talks to me in dreams. I woke up one night, and he was in it. My ex-husband was in it. Because I had finally realized the purpose of everything that had happened. This was six years later. And I'm just realizing the purpose. He's slowly showing me stuff as to why I went through what I went through. And I had to realize I could never be with him again. Because... I can't be the person I am now as his wife. Because who he needs is not who I was built to be. And that's why we never worked out. I never would have been able to be an author. I never would have been able to be the president of a mentoring program helping girls. Because I would have been in a relationship with someone who wanted all the spotlight, all the limelight on him. He wasn't willing to share. And so when he saw my worth and how valuable I was, he had to go find somebody else because he couldn't handle the air up there. He knew how high God was taking me. 
He couldn't handle it. So God had to drop them off. He starts removing people from our lives when they can't handle where he's taking us. We may not see where he's taking us because if we he tells us too much, we're not going to go. Because we sometimes don't feel like we can handle it. But he knows what we can handle. And so when he starts dropping people off, he's taking care of you. He's protecting you. It was a reason why. Now I realize why I had to go through a divorce at 30 years old because he wasn't going to be able to go where I was headed. And now I know why I'm in a relationship with the husband I have now because he can handle the the air up there. He's not trying to suck my air in to prevent me from getting at the same level because he's jealous that I'm higher above than he is. So we have to realize that God, when he removes people from us, is to protect us. Because those people are not going to be able to handle what we got coming up next. They're either going to try to suffocate us or pull us down because they can't handle it. Mm, mm, that's good. That actually, it can be family. It could be friends. Yeah, that actually ministered, that ministered to me um, because once I started doing uh, my ministry and started just coming to know Christ, like you said, you start noticing the flock that you have starts to dwindle down. And it can be lonely uh-huh. sometimes. It can be it can be sad. But that's why I think as Christians, we got to link up. We got to band together. Because if we're all yep. working towards that same purpose, loving God, loving people, making disciples, um, then we should be able to do that together. If You know, if we're truly doing right. it, if we're putting God first. But, you know, like we said earlier, sometimes it's the people, it's the Christians that's putting us down. Like the story of the Good Samaritan, the priest and the Levite crossed over on the other side of the street. And, you know, Uh so, so yeah. So, okay. So again, thank you for being transparent with your story. Thank you for sharing your testimony. So somebody's in your situation, somebody's going through similar, uh, similar things that you've been through and that you overcame. What advice would you share with them? And, and what is life like on the other side of that trial? The one thing that helped me was that I had to be still. I had to be still. I had to. I'm not a talker anyway. Like the fact that I do these podcasts and I talk as much as I have today. If anybody, if you knew me years ago, you were like, you said all that? Like I'm the type of person, I'm an introvert. So I'm okay with being in the corner by myself. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm still dealing with some of that now. But it took me to another level where you got to open your mouth. And so... I had to learn how to be still. I had to learn how to tune everything else out so that I could hear him. I would suggest to somebody that's going through this right now, go out to dinner by yourself. Go to a movie by yourself and allow God to talk to you. You can't hear everything when it's 59 people telling you what you should and shouldn't do. Whether they've been in a situation or not. They say married people should hang out with single folks. But you can learn from everybody. Either what to do or what not to do. And so I have a spirit of discernment where I listen more than I talk. They say you got two ears and one mouth for a reason. You're supposed to listen more than you talk. And so I'm listening and watching people. And that's how I surround myself with the right folks. But sometimes you got to remove yourself from everybody so that you can hear what God is telling you. Because he already knows what he wants you to do. All you have to do is be still and have a heart that's open and a mouth that's willing to say yes. Those are the three things that helped me get to where I am today. I was still, I had an open heart, and I was willing to say yes. Because I realized that everything that I had been doing on my own wasn't working. So the least I could do was try what he was telling me. It couldn't hurt. And then I had to be willing to say yes. Yep, I was saying yes to everybody else, and they were stabbing me in the back, lying to my face, treating me like crap. So I was like, well, let me try him. And let's see how this goes. And this has been the best decision of my life. 
but you got to clear everything else out and just be by yourself and be still and allow for God to speak to you. It could be in a dream. It could be in a song. I watch TV. It, I learned, got messages from God in TV. But you have to be able to hear his voice. The Bible says he, we know his voice. Yeah, his sheep know his voice, yeah. Right. And, and and we most of us have kids or we work with children and we you know you got some kids you can tell them one time they'll do it and you got some you got to uh, look at them crazy and they'll do it and then you got some where you just got to have some physical contact you got to give them a hug in order for them to understand what you're saying so adults are the same way everybody gets to listen different 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 Thank you so much, Sharif, for being so transparent. Thank you for sharing your blessing on it. And thank you to all the listeners who stuck it out with us and listened so far. I pray that you do not end the conversation here. If you have the Anchor app, you can leave us an audio message telling us about the show, sharing your testimony, letting us know what you think. Even better, you can head over to blessedmoney.com or download the app and become a member and continue the conversation there. Share your testimony on today's scripture. Tell us what you thought about it. Uh, Leave a comment for Cherie. Let her know that that you're supporting her. Let her know if you benefited from her. And I also want to remind you to pick up a copy of her book, Underneath the Hat, Check her, check her podcast out and, and just support each other. As Christians, we got to support each other. And so until next time, please be a blessing and share your testimony. Testimony. Thanks again for joining us on the Blessed Money Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, blessedmoney.com, or download the Blessed Money app, where you can continue the conversation from this podcast by sharing your thoughts and testimonies on the scripture. You can fellowship with other Christians or check out the Blessed Money blog. Oh, and I almost forgot, if you found any value in this show, we'd appreciate our ratings on iTunes, Spotify, or on the platform you use to listen to the show. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about us, that would be a huge blessing. Until next time, peace, peace.